We're going to move to our next presentation. Again, it's a real pleasure and honor to introduce Brian Painter, who's going to be speaking with us about Oklahoma's dam photo of the day. And I know, Brian, you're going to joke a little bit about that dam and, and uh, 2020 and some other things as you go along. Uh, let's, uh, let's turn it over to Brian, do a mic check and make sure all things are working. Brian, please. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks a lot for having me uh, here today. And uh, my my audio was cutting in and out there a little bit earlier, and so when it was, I was uh, probably using my key word of my presentation here out of context a little there earlier this morning. But everything's going good now, and and uh, uh, I, I appreciate all the help. So it, it was mid-April and we were on day whatever the pandemic policy changes. And um, as I said, there, there was a word many of us were probably hearing over and over. So it just seemed like the ideal time to get away with calling the series damn photo of the day. Uh, in, in Oklahoma, uh, if you could go to the next slide there, Ray. Sure, uh-huh. In Oklahoma, uh, it's a fact that 90% of Oklahomans live within 20 miles of one of Oklahoma's uh, 2,107 flood control dams. Uh, and and as uh, the photo there showed, th there are some that live much closer than 20 miles. Mm. On the next slide here, you'll see uh, that it, it still seemed like many people had passed by these structures day after day and had no idea they were anything more than water and holes for cattle or nice fishing ponds or, or lakes. And so as we go to the next slide, uh, on that morning in mid-April that I referred to on the cover slide, our executive director, Trey Lamb, sent out an email to conservation district saying we wanted to feature 60 of Oklahoma's flood control dams. The Facebook series would be called Dam Photo of the Day, and I'll hold some of the reasons for the purpose of this series until the end. So in, in our next slide, we talk about um, right away, photos came flooding in. These Facebook posts ran Monday through Friday each week, and for the first 15 posts, we showed uh, the, the photo and listed the site, and the conservation district. Then at the end of those first 15, we decided to take a TV timeout and do some calculating. Uh, Tammy Sawatsky, or the OCC Conservation Programs Division Director, used the dam watch system, which includes the benefits model, and this was extremely helpful. This allowed us to show the financial benefits that result from damage that did not occur because the dam is there. We look at these statistics for the watershed and for the county the dam is in. And uh, then if you, uh, uh, we go to our next one, and here you see uh, Turkey Creek number 11 in, um, uh, I think you go ahead there, so a slide or so, Ray. All right. I uh, see. Turkey Creek number 11 and uh, in in major western county or major county in western Oklahoma. This was one of the first 15 featured. And uh, when we look at the watershed of those first 15, the benefits totaled more than 21 million. Uh, when we looked at the counties of the first 15 posted, the benefits totaled over 24 million. And that's an incredible amount of damage that, that did not occur. Um, so then for the remainder of the series, what we did is we provided, as you, as you see right here, we provided the watershed, the county information, and each site each day using dam watch. So let's look at this slide uh, as an example. The, the post, uh, this post came more than two months into the project. In these posts, we highlight the conservation district in part because the districts took the time to have the staff go out and get these photos and then took the time to get them to me. Plus, they were great about answering any questions I might have. After the conservation district gave me the name of the site, I went to the dam watch system. 
for this post that you're seeing here, I looked up the South Salt Creek watershed and it told me there are 34 dams controlling 145.5 square miles. Then I scroll down to the average annual total benefits and this is like a 10 year average. Then I looked up the county, Adair County, which borders Arkansas, has 18 dams controlling 71.5 square miles and those have total benefits of 1.4 million dollars. Let me point something out real quick that I noticed. On these posts, I expected to see support from districts and individuals in the specific areas, but I think it brought some districts together, a common ground type situation, because in the likes for the post, I would see districts and employees of those districts uh, following the post of others, even more than they normally do. And that was cool to see, especially in this pandemic situation where so many were teleworking and uh, supporting each other was even more important than usual. We couldn't see each other, but we could still support each other. So if you go to the next slide, Ray. All right. Now, while we did not, uh, while we did have, you know, nice scenic photos, um, we also had photos showing issues and maintenance. This gave the public a real inside look at the responsibilities that come with these structures. Sometimes the photos involve debris, such as in Atoka County in southeastern Oklahoma. Here he's clearing debris from the principal spillway after a heavy rainfall. Then we'll go to the next photo. This next one is out of western Oklahoma in Dewey County. And uh, in, in that photo, uh, they're putting a, a sleeve on the tower that was uh, leaking, as you can see here. In the next photo, uh, here we've got a dam in McLean County, and this is in central Oklahoma, where they're using a diver uh, for work on Finn Creek 11. So these are just a lot of perspectives that the, the public might not see. Go to the next slide, if you would, Ray. And one last maintenance photo. This is pretty common, the need to clean up after beavers. So as you see from these photos, rather than just saying, here's a dam, isn't the lake pretty? We gave an inside look at some of the work that goes on in terms of operation and maintenance. Whatever the scene was, the public liked it. They shared it and they commented on it often complimenting those who were doing the maintenance to keep the dams working effectively. In the next uh, slide, we also ran a special post, and this was at the request of our partners at NRCS. Chris Stoner, the NRCS Oklahoma State Conservation Engineer, submitted a post for Dam Safety Awareness Day. I'll read a portion of what he wrote real quick. May 31st marks a sobering anniversary of one of the deadliest dam failures in the nation's history. The South Fork Dam near Johnstown, Pennsylvania in 1889, claiming more than 2,200 lives. Sadly, many dam failures have occurred since that fateful day in 1889. To date, there's not been a loss of life from the failure of any NRCS assisted dams, but failures have occurred. We must all stay vigilant in order to maintain that statistic, especially as these dams continue to age. He praised Oklahoma's uh, dams for their work during the devastating floods in 2019. And with Dam Watch, you can pull time frames, and the media loves that. They, they love to see those numbers. For example, there were $33 million in monetary benefits resulting from the watershed projects in in Oklahoma during storms that occurred in May of 2019. That's May alone. Chris also praised the work of the flood control dams when rainfalls, uh, record rainfalls and the remnants of uh, tropical storm bill put them to the test in 2015. Here in this slide, uh, we're showing repairs to the auxiliary spillway of Caddo Creek Site 27 following uh, the extreme flows from tropical storm bill. Chris said in his post, our work doesn't end. The dams are resilient, but require continual maintenance and inspection. It can be a daunting task to, keep, to continue to maintain and repair these dams and keep them functioning as designed. These extreme events put into focus important work that everyone involved in dam safety does daily. On this 
USDM Safety Awareness Day, I want to thank each of you for that work and for your continued efforts. So then as we go to the next slide, Ray, uh, at that point you could say, well, that's good information, but what difference did this series make? Well, people told us over the phone and through emails that they were following this series. Uh, they loved the name of it and, and they would bring it up often. They sometimes had questions and we went after those answers. Plus we had 29 different conservation districts from all over the state um, participate in a series of 60 sites. That in itself was cool, more than two dozen districts pitching in. In the next photo, uh, you'll see Rock Creek 15. And then this is one of my favorite photos. It's the, the photo itself is a little fuzzy, but when it, when it was sent to me, uh, the purpose was very clear. Uh, the dam is getting the job done. And I believe that's kind of symbolic of this series. I, I believe this series got the job done. You look at the Facebook analytics, we were able to reach more than 22,000 people and the post had more than 500 likes and more than 105 shares. In addition, we put out a press release about the support of the legislature for Oklahoma dams. And then over a two month period, we featured that topic, the legislative support and dam watch in a widely distributed free magazine that reaches urban and rural populations. You go to the next slide, please, Ray. Uh, well, you know, often we see there's something works, you try it again, you alter it just a little and, and go at it from a different approach. We were still in the pandemic and we still wanted conservation districts involved and we still had data that, that we thought the public would find interesting. So after the uh, damn photo of the day series, we reached back out to the conservation districts to feature streams in their area. A catchy name is real important and batted a few ideas around. And in the spirit of Shark Week and everything sharks, we called it sharkless photo of the day. The districts would give us a photo of a stream in their area and our Oklahoma Blue Thumb program provided information about what kind of fish, many types, but not probably sharks were in those waters. They gave us photos of the fish as well. With each post, we provided a link to data reports collected on those streams or others nearby. The series consisted of 15 posts, two a week, and we were again happy with the outcome. The reach was 9,774 people and these posts were shared 83 times. We also used our newsletter that goes out to OCC employees and districts every uh, other week to share the importance of the series. In the next photo here, uh, I'll just wrap up by saying that I don't think people ever lose the desire to learn. Life uh, should always be continuing education in a pandemic or otherwise. So just think to yourself, what resources do you have and which ones can you bring together Together, such as conservation districts and dam watch or conservation districts and blue thumb data collection reports. What, what sources do you have that you can pair up and uh, present to the public and, and to, to your producers and, and your districts? This was outreach without going out. And I thank Trey for suggesting dam photo of the day, Tammy for calculating the numbers early in the project, Tammy and Chris were training me on using Dam Watch. The Dam Photos series uh, ran from April 14th to June 29th. And um, I want to also thank Rebecca Bond and Kim Shaw, the Blue Thrum program, for providing me with information and photos for the Sharkless Photo of the Day. I think a lot of people, including myself, learned a lot. I try to remember that many, many times understanding is the only thing standing in the way of support and a lot of people want to understand. Thank you all very much for your time. And uh, if you have any questions on, on these presentations or, or anything, my contact information is right here. Please never hesitate to give me a call. Uh, I appreciate last year I got to go to Lexington, met a lot of great people, and uh, they have helped me throughout the year, and I want to do the same for others.
thank you all. And thank you, Ray, very much. You're great to work with. You bet, Brian. And gosh, did I hear you right? 22,000 people you reached uh, and reached back to you and you involved so many different audiences in this uh, campaign, the two campaigns that you mentioned today. Yes, sir. That That's right. Uh, 22,000 with that one and then came back with the second series, which was a much shorter series, but it, it brought us 9,000 more people in, in the reach. So, yes.